and welcome. My name is Stephen Dickens, and I'm your host here on the Future and Tech webcast. At Microsoft Build last week, I had a great conversation with Elastic Chief Product Officer Ken Exner. He leads the engineering and product teams. And Elastic announced its new Elasticsearch Relevance Engine at Microsoft Build. This technology makes it possible for companies to connect generative AI to their proprietary enterprise data. Ken, tell me a little bit about some of the big market trends related to AI and the role of the relevance engine. Well, I mean, the big thing that's happened uh, in the last half year uh, are the advances in generative AI. So where historically AI has been about learning and analyzing from historical data, it's now about not only just analyzing and learning data, it's about generating data, generating content. Mm -hmm from the data. So I think that's been the sort of the, the revolutionary step forward that's happened that kind of has changed everyone's perspective on what what's uh, possible in AI, kind of you know, brought sort of the future of AI forward by probably a decade uh, in terms of the capabilities that people expected at this time. So, uh, and this is the work that's happened uh, in the various large language models, the transformer models uh, like uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4 uh, that power things like ChatGPT. But also just any kind of these, these, these generative approaches for doing co-generation or uh, art generation or music generation, like they're, they're, it's, we've taken a, a phenomenal step forward in, our, in the capabilities that the industry has for generating content that is compelling and seems very human. Uh, so I, I think uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's time frame for the power of AI has suddenly shifted by you know, at least a decade or so. Uh, I think... We're also trying to figure out how do we uh, how do we live with this? How do we use this? How do we take advantage of this uh, in in commercial settings? Like how do businesses take advantage of this? Um, you know, I, I know inside of Elastic we use co generation quite a bit. It's you know interesting technology. But how do we also help our customers uh, use the power of generative AI for their unique scenarios? How do we use it in a security setting? How do we use it in an observability setting? Uh, or if people are using Elasticsearch to power search, how do, how do we improve that experience by pulling the powers and capabilities of generative AI? And that's a lot of what we're focused on these days. Yeah, and from I, I've been getting closer to the technology. Your team's been briefing me and sort of we've been digging deep. So I understand there's a new offering coming, that we're, which is bringing that generative AI to a company's proprietary enterprise data. We hear about a lot about these sort of large language models scraping the public internet and, and kind of building from those. But I see the opportunity around the corpus of data that sits within an enterprise. Maybe that's PII data, maybe that's patient record data with it, with inside the sort of hospital network, whatever that sort of enterprise data set is. I think that's going to be the next wave of opportunity. And obviously you guys are well positioned in that space from the work you've been doing in search. Can you provide some more insights some more thoughts on kind of how you see the enterprise use case and, and, and the role Elastic's going to play? Yeah, I think you nailed it, Stephen. Uh, we're kind of right at the middle between um, the public LLMs and the, the research that's going on uh, in transformer, transformer models and what enterprises have. So enterprises have all this uh, proprietary data. You know, sometimes it's their internal uh, knowledge wikis or you know, the, their Slack, their entire history of Slack messages. Uh, or if it's, a, if it's a legal firm, it's, it's all the, uh, the contracts that they have. Or if it's a retailer, it's their, their product catalog and all the information mm -hmm. about their product. This is all proprietary data. And all the LLMs have been trained on, on generic data. Uh, and one of the interesting thing that, things that happens is when you combine uh, generic base level uh, LLM information with information that's particular to a context, you get really interesting scenarios. You, you get the ability to not only take advantage of the, the language capabilities of the LLM, you get the context of a particular business or a particular product catalog. So this allows a retailer, for example, to help answer questions about their products in with knowledge of their products, things that the, the, the public LLMs are not trained on. Uh, or if you are uh, a business and you want to uh, help your employees figure out how to, how to update their tax selections or sign up for benefits and things like that, 
The public LLMs are not going to know anything about that. So how do you create that bridge between proprietary data and the public LLMs? Uh, and this is where Elastic comes in. We're kind of uh, in between those two. We create the bridge. Uh, we pass the context uh, to the LLM so that they can uh, understand how to answer it in the context of that business, in the context of what someone's asking. I think that's really, I mean, the one that stands out for me are the examples you mentioned is that product catalog. I think people can understand that kind of retail shopping experience. Maybe it's a Walmart or a, a Target or somebody with thousands and thousands of product, product SKUs that have come in from millions and millions of supp suppliers. And, you know, there's a huge product catalog. Being able to provide that product description information through into a, an LLL, LLM model, e easy for me to say, um, that right. then can sort of be either an internally facing tool or that external facing tool, but built and trained on that internal data set. I think that's the interesting model for me. I mean, obviously the public models are fascinating, but you touched on it there when we, we were discussing it. I want to understand where the Elasticsearch relevance engine fits in that context. So how do you see that helping organizations as they optimize their infrastructure, use their talent? Just can you sort of maybe let's go, and I'm setting you up because you're the chief product officer to go towards product, but maybe just frame that in for me a little bit around the relevance engine. So, um, I like to think of it as uh, uh, context shapes relevance, but relevance also shapes context. And, and let me explain what that means. Um, in order for these LLMs to, to give meaningful answer, they have to have a little bit of context. And that context needs to be passed through prompting, which means that you give it context when you ask a question. So you say, you know, um, uh, tell me a story uh, about uh, whatever as a nursery rhyme. You're giving it context. You want it to do it this way. Or you give it context by saying, you know, here's, here's some information, summarize it. You're giving it context. Um, you can also pass context uh, using context windows, which means that you can pass information to an LLM in a, in a private setting, like in a single tenant environment, that gives it more context on how to, what to be answering something about. So if you're trying to get a summary of a legal brief, you can pass a legal brief and say, summarize this. Or if you are trying to scope the answer to a product catalog. You, you can pass um, information about the product catalog that, that is useful in answering it. Now, this, this is essentially what we're trying to do, is trying to you know, provide the context uh, that gives, um, gives the, the answer from the LLM more relevance. Um, one of the challenges is there's limitations on what you can do here in terms of how, how big these context windows can be. Uh, it's expensive if you're trying to send lots of tokens uh, over. So what you end up wanting to do is send over the most relevant information. And this is why I say relevance also shapes context because you need to folk, you need to discern decide what is the most important information for this LLM to answer, uh, and then that uh, allows the the LLM to focus on that. So if you are asking something like uh, you know, uh, tell me the most current way um, to update my tax elections. It goes and looks at a company's information and figures out the most relevant the relevant documents or the re most relevant wiki uh, items to send the LLM. So you know, using our relevance engine, you can send the most relevant information to the LLM that allows it to have the context to give you the most relevant answer. So that's... Almost, a, and I'm trying to break this down and get this in my head. This is that pre-staging component, pull the documents back that then I want to put in front of the LLM type model. Obviously, there could be thousands and thousands of documents to search from, maybe even hundreds of thousands of documents. How do I pull back the five that are most relevant and then present them to the model? Is that the way of thinking about that? It does, but all this happens at query time. So all this happens uh, real time. It's blazing fast. So all this stuff has been indexed beforehand by Elastic and Elasticsearch uh, through our integrations with uh, the various LLMs. We then pass the context that allows the LLM to understand the most relevant information.
So it, it allows a company to take their proprietary information, take their private information, and, and use it to inform the LLM so that they can get the most relevant answer that's specific to their business, that's specific to their use case. Um, so I, I think it's an exciting space. It's an exciting way to bridge uh, enterprises and, and private use cases with uh, the power of these uh, large language models. So I think as we look at the AI space, I heard the other day there's over 500 startups that have already been funded with AI in their pitch deck. Probably, <laughs> Probably more than that this week have, have received some type of funding. But I think for me, that's the piece that's most, most interesting is if this is the, the new gold rush, what are those picks and shovels type companies? There's going to be lots of specific models you know you mentioned the legal profession i think that's going to be one that i see you know there's going to be ones for cancer there's going to be ones for particular drugs there's going to be ones for retail there's going to be a lot of industry use cases and and organizations that get started that we haven't heard of that are those cool apps that we'll all be using two years from now but as i look at the sector i'm more interested in the Levi Strauss type company from the gold rush rather than that person and that mine that stood up for a couple of years to do the, do the panning for gold. So where do you see yourselves as elastic in that? I see you as a picks and shovels type company that's going to ride this wave, regardless of what that flashy app is that we're all, that we don't know we're going to be using in two years time, but we know we're going to be using it. I see you guys a little bit further down the stack as one of those picks and shovels type companies. Where do you see yourselves? I think we're both. Um, but I think uh, the, the announcements we have this, uh, this week are really about the picks and shovels. It's about the foundational capabilities, but we do both. Um, so we, we make sure that we invest in the foundational building blocks that allow developers to build unique solutions on top of us but we also use those things ourselves in our solutions, like in our observability platform and in our security platform. We consume these things ourselves in order to do things like runbook automation or in order to do things like anomaly detection. So we are consuming some of the, the foundational capabilities ourselves, but it does start with the investments in the foundational ca capabilities, the, the primitives uh, that allow people to build unique things on top of us. Uh, in, 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 in terms of Elastic and uh, our relationship with AI, our investments in AI, this this goes back a while. This goes back to our acquisition of Prealert like a number of years ago and a bunch of capabilities that we've invested as building blocks in the platform. Uh, you know, uh, we've invested in making sure that Elasticsearch is essentially a vector store, a vector database that can store embeddings data, which is uh, similarities data used generated and used by LLMs. Uh, we've invested in the relevance capabilities. We've invested in uh, transformer model integration. So you know, well before ChatGPT, we had integrated with transformers so you could integrate uh, you know, uh, whatever transformer model you were hosting or, or finding and hugging face together with Elasticsearch. So we've been investing in these capabilities for several years now that have allowed us to now be at this, um, be at the bridge between uh, public LLMs and enterprises. So uh, this is not something that we suddenly started working on uh, last week. This is something we've been working on for a couple of years now. Uh, it's uh, allowed us to sort of be in this unique place where we can help uh, shape the context uh, of the answers in an uh, LLM using a business's unique data. So, Ken, as we start to wrap up, I'm going to do a little experiment. You didn't see this as a prepped question. I'm going to put it almost as a prompt into chat GPT. Summarize the last 15 minutes of our conversation into two or three sentences. Easy. Um, uh, last <laughs> I didn't know that one was coming, so I staged oh, that one on you. No. Elasticsearch um, ha has been investing uh, in AI foundational capabilities for several years, uh, including uh, you know, making uh, Elasticsearch a first-class vector database, uh, integrations with transformer models, proprietary AI models for, for re relevance and ranking. Uh, and these capabilities that we've been investing in for a couple years now, now allow us to create a bridge between uh, LLMs, large language models, 
and companies in their private data. So we're a bridge that allows companies, uh, e-commerce companies, um, uh, law firms, any anyone with private data to leverage the power of a large language model like ChatGPT with their private data. So we, we provide the bridge that helps give context to the large language model that allows them to give a relevant answer specific to your business. So Ken, I, that was a fantastic summary. Really appreciate the conversation. You've been listening to the Futurum Tech webcast. Please click and subscribe. Join us on the next episode and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>